6.4 practice problems. A student mixes 50 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid and 50 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide in a coffee cup calorim calor calorimeter and observes the change in temperature until the mixture reaches thermal equilibrium. The initial and final temperatures degree Celsius of the mixture are shown in the diagrams above in the laboratory setup. Based off of the results, what is a change of temperature reported with the correct number of significant figures? So the thing that I'm worried most about is identifying the number of sig figs that I am allowed. I can see that um, I go from 20 to 30 in my uh, thermometer here. And each of these marks is going to be one degree. I get to measure past uh, one past what the actual marks are. So that means that I end up with um, one decimal, one decimal place that I am allowed to have. So everything that does not have um, one decimal is going to be eliminated and I would be left with 5.5 .5, uh, degrees Celsius. For an experiment, 50 grams of water was added to a coffee cup calorimeter, as shown in the diagram below. The initial temperature of the water was 22 degrees Celsius and absorbed 300 joules of heat from an object that was carefully placed inside the calorimeter. Assuming no heat was transferred to the surroundings, which of the following was the approximate temperature of the water after thermal equilibrium was reached. So we are going to be using Q is equal to MCAT. Q is our amount of energy absorbed, so that is 300 joules. M is our mass of water, which was five, uh, or sorry, 50.0 grams. The uh, C is our specific heat capacity of water, and that was given as 4.2 uh, joule grams per degree Celsius. And then uh, that being multiplied by the delta T. So I'm going to divide both sides by the 50 and the 4.2. And that will give me the change in temperature. So 300 divided by 50 and um, 4.2 gives me 1.429 uh, approximately. And again, this is a change in temperature. And I need to carefully read this. This is, um, I am going um, I see that I have absorbed that energy, so that means that that is going to be a positive. So this amount plus the um, initial temperature of 22 degrees Celsius gives me um, approximately uh, 23.4 and that would be option choice D. In an experiment to determine the specific heat of a metal, a student transferred a sample of the metal that was heated in boiling water to room temperature water in an insulated cup. The student recorded the temperature of the water after thermal equilibrium was reached. The data is shown in the table above. Based off of the data, what is the calculated heat or Q absorbed by the water uh, produced um, reported with the appropriate number of significant figures. So since I'm dealing with uh, sig figs, I can go ahead and um, probably eliminate all but the correct answer um, when I'm dealing with this. So we are going to be dealing with Q equals MCAT as our temperature or as our equation here, 
this is all multiplication, so that means that whatever is going to have the least number of sig figs is the thing that I'm going uh, to uh, end up being able to use, except for the uh, delta t, which is going to be addition, so um, I would need to, to check that. So um, mass of the water, this is going to be five sig figs. Uh, the uh, temperature of the water and the final temperature, um, I need to go ahead and figure out what that, what that delta T is going to be. I'm going to end up with two decimal places. So 32.8 minus 24.95. I get two decimal places, so that means 7.85. Uh, degrees Celsius, so that is three sig figs. Um, specific heat, this is a, a defined thing, so we're going to go ahead and say that that is not going to affect um, our uh, sig fig count. So I only get three sig figs, so I'm going to eliminate anything that has more or less than that, so that would leave me with answer choice B. A one gram sample of a cashew was burned in a calorimeter containing 1,000 grams of water, and the temperature of the water changed from 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. In another experiment, three grams of marshmallow was burned in a calorimeter containing 2,000 grams of water, and the temperature was changed from 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Based off of the data, um, which of the following can be concluded about the energy content of one gram of each of the substances where the specific heat of water is equal to 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. So um, this gives me uh, a exactly one gram, so that's nice. This has uh, three times the amount of uh, sample and two times the amount of water. Um, so they both increased the same amount of uh, degrees Celsius, five degrees Celsius, but this was three times the sample and two times the amount of water. So remember that with uh, Q equaling MCAT, Uh, our mass of um, the water, we had it uh, twice as high, but we also had three times the amount uh, to produce the same uh, temperature. So one gram was able to produce five degrees where I needed uh, three grams. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the cashew is going to release more energy, so I'm going to eliminate anything that uh, does not say that. The cashew is going to release more energy than the combustion of the marshmallow. Again, um, five degrees Celsius temperature difference, three times the sample, uh, two times the uh, amount of water. That is not um, an equal uh, section there, if this was three times the sample, three times the amount of water, and I still could produce the same delta T, then we would have the same amount of energy being released. However, that's not what's happening. The cashew is going to release more energy than the marshmallow. The heating curve for the sample of pure ethanol is provided above. The temperature was recorded as 50.0 grams uh, sample of solid ethanol was heated at a constant rate. Which of the following explains why the slope of segment T is greater than the slope of segment R? Okay, so uh, the slope of segment T is where we are going from. Uh, this is initially where we are uh, solid. This is melting. Then we are liquid here. This is where we start evaporation. And then uh, this T segment is when I am purely a gas. 
So, um, asking why the slope of segment T um, is greater than that of slope of segment R. Uh, this is going to be because my specific heat, um, how much uh, energy I have to put in in order to raise the temperature higher is going to be uh, lower when I am a gas than when I am a liquid. So something along those lines is going to be um, what I'm going to choose. Specific heat capacity of gaseous ethanol is less than the specific heat capacity of liquid ethanol. Uh, that sounds accurate, but we'll see if there's anything uh, better. The specific heat capacity of gaseous ethanol is greater than the specific heat capacity of liquid ethanol. That's reversed, so no. Heat of vaporization of ethanol is less than the heat of fusion of ethanol. That would be dealing with um, those uh, change points. So uh, both C and D are going to be eliminated, leaving me only with option choice A, where I have that the specific heat capacity of gaseous ethanol is going to be greater uh, than the uh, specific heat capacity for uh, liquid ethanol. In an insulated cup of negligible heat capacity, 50 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius is mixed with 30 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the mixture is closest to. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this calculation uh, using the heat transfer equation. So that's going to be where I have my mass one times my final temperature minus my initial temperature for uh, sample one, set equal to my mass two times my uh, initial temperature of sample two minus my um, final temperature. So this, uh, here, this is going to be my uh, colder sample. So this is going to be the 30 grams. And I don't know what TF is, minus uh, my initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius equals to my hotter 50 grams times um, my initial temperature of 40 degrees Celsius minus my uh, final temperature, which I don't know, that I'm going to distribute. So uh, this would be 30 grams temperature final minus uh, 30 times 20, which gives me uh, 600 equals 50 times 40, which gives me 2,000, minus uh, the 50 uh, temperature final. Uh, go ahead and add 600 to both sides and add 50 of the TF to both sides. So that would leave me with uh, 80 of the temperature final is equal to 2600. And then if I divide both sides by the 80, so 2600 divided by 80 gives me uh, 32.5 degrees Celsius as my uh, final temperature. And then my closest is going to be uh, the 33. Now, uh, if you forget this equation and you're trying to logic your way through this, um, I'm going to be at a temperature that is closer to whatever I have more of. So I had 50 uh, grams of water at 40 and 30 grams of water at 20. So I could eliminate any that was closer or exactly in the middle. So I was only dealing with really 33 or 38. I didn't have uh, substantially more uh, water at 40 than I did at 20. So 33 would have been a, a best guess if you forget this equation at some point. A hot iron ball is dropped into a 200 gram sample of water initially at 50 degrees Celsius. If 
8.4 kilojoules of heat is transferred from the ball to the water. What is the time, final temperature of the water? And uh, then I am given the specific heat capacity of water here. So um, I am going to go ahead and uh, set this up. So this is currently in kilojoules, so I do need to transfer it out of kilojoules and into just joules. So remember that there is 1,000 uh, kilojoules in a joule, multiply by 1,000, or move the decimal over three times. Um, so I am left with 8,400. Um, I'm using Q is equal to MCAT. Okay, the um, mass of water is what I'm interested in, so that's 200 grams. Okay, um, my specific heat of water is 4.2 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. And then um, delta T. Um, I don't know what my uh, final temperature is, so I am going to be solving for delta T and then I will be dealing with it um, versus the uh, 50 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to divide both sides by 200 and 4.4. So 8400 divided by uh, 4.4 and 200 leaves me with 9.5454 blah 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 is equal to my uh, delta T. And we know that uh, delta T is going to be the temperature final minus the temperature initial. My initial temperature was um, 50, okay? So uh, TF minus 50 is equal to that 9.5454, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I add 50 to both sides. And I end up with my temperature final being approximately equal to uh, 59.54, rounding up uh, to the appropriate one sig fig, that would be 60 degrees Celsius. Um, a 10 gram cube of copper at temperature one is placed in an insulated cup containing 10 grams of water at temperature two. If temperature one is greater than that of temperature two, which of the following is true of the system when it has obtained thermal equilibrium? So this means that my temperature of the copper was greater than the temperature of the water. So the uh, temperature of the water and um, temperature of the copper are eventually going to meet uh, somewhere in between there, but my copper was hotter. I can see that they gave me my specific heat of copper at 0.385 and my specific heat of water at uh, 4.18. Now, since the specific heat of water is so much greater than the specific heat of copper, that means that the copper is going to um, more readily give up its thermal energy than water will accept it. And so, um, I am going to say that the copper is going to lose more thermal energy than the uh, uh, than the uh, well the system gains it, but the uh, overall temperature the copper is going to decrease its temperature uh, substantially more than the water would increase its temperature. So I'm going to look for something that says something along those lines. The temperature of copper changed more than the temperature of water. So that's basically exactly what I just said. So we're going to hold off on, the, on that, make sure that nothing else is better. Temperature of the water changed more than the temperature of the copper. Um, no, the uh, heat capacity of water means that it is very reluctant to change, whereas the heat capacity of copper being much lower means that it is very readily changing. So that is the opposite. Temperature of water and copper change the same amount. This would only happen if my heat capacities were the same, so no. The relative temperature changes of copper and water cannot be determined without knowing T1 and T2. Um, since we were given the heat capacities of both samples, we can make a, a pretty good guess as to what um, is going to happen within the system. So option choice A is my best choice.